That was really stupid. <laughs> Yo, what's up, killers? It is your final girl, Mel, and this is my killer podcast. What's up, everybody? Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are new here, you can go ahead and hit that like, hit that subscribe, and kill that bell for your girl if you want future notifications on content. Otherwise, if you want to join me on my other socials, I'm on Instagram, Letterboxd, TikTok, Twitter, and Patreon. (laughs) Yes, I do all of those things. It's ridiculous. So the subject we are going to be talking about today is the Criterion Sale. (sighs) Yes, I know. I said I wasn't going to participate in the Criterion sale in the first place, and then I did, and then I said I wasn't going to do it again, and then I did it again, (laughs) and then again. Whatever. So I picked up five films on that first Criterion sale haul. I will link that video below if you guys want to check it out, and then I went and picked up Mulholland Drive when it came out on 4K. This is Criterion's first 4K to drop, so I kind of wanted to pick it up. So you guys already know that I picked this one up. And you can check out my unboxing on the channel. I did one. Yes, I did. And I will link that video below if you guys want to check it out. But you guys know all the things about this one. So I'm just going to put it right there. Third time going to Barnes & Noble. (laughs) I went for Uncut Gems 4K. I really wanted to pick that one up. I wanted to get it this time. But my Barnes & Noble didn't have it, which was sad because I did want it, but I ended up picking up three other things <laughs> instead, definitely solidifying the fact that this will be my last Criterion haul, and also solidifying the fact that I will not see another Criterion 4K until June or July of next year when they do their next sale, so that's a bummer, but these 4Ks are not cheap, man. They're like 50 bucks. So I can't be spending that amount of money on a movie. Anyway, I did pick up House. I read the synopsis on the back of this one and found it to be incredibly interesting and psychedelic and hallucinogenic and all of the things that they say it is on the back here. So I am looking forward to checking this one out. I know nothing about it. I literally was just like thumbing through all the Blu-rays looking for an uncut gems 4K that could be misplaced and just kept finding tons and tons and tons of stuff. But this is a Japanese film with English subtitles. It's 88 minutes. It's from 1977. So it'll be interesting to check this one out and see what it's all about. Hit me in the comments below and let me know if you've seen this one and what you thought of it and if you think I'll like it. Because by now, we should all know what kind of movies that I am into. And that's why this is fun. That's why we can grow and trust each other on our recommendations because we know what kind of films bring me joy. And if they bring you joy, then my recommendations you can trust. And your recommendations I can trust. You know, that was a whole lot of shit. Didn't need to be said. However, going to check this one out. I'm excited for it. I also picked up I Married a Witch. This is also a blind buy, but this was one of the cheaper criterion. So this one was only 15-ish bucks on the sale. So I decided to pick it up. I also know nothing about this, but it seemed it seemed charming, so I'm going to check it out. I love me some charming movies. I'll let you guys know what I think about it. And then the last one I picked up is Vampire. This one was just too groovy not to pick up. It is a black and white and German with English subtitles. It is a horror, so that was exciting about it. But also, the treatment on this one is pretty fantastic. So you got your Blu-ray right here, but look how big that book is that comes with this. That's a pretty big book. So... I am super excited to check this one out. It also looks like that might be a media a media book in there with the films or I doubt it's a slip cover. Criterion doesn't normally do slip covers, I don't think. Should I open this? <laughs> Let's do a surprise unboxing. Unboxing, shall we? 
All right, surprise unboxing coming at you for Vampire. Let's see what's in this bad boy. So the outer case is kind of flimsy. It's not your hard shell that we're used to with Arrow, but I think this is normally how Criterion do with their shells. But, oh. <laughs> I was so wrong. This is not the movie. This is the movie, and this is the book. Holy shit. Okay, so this is the media book. Not real impressed with it, but oh, oh my god, there's another book. Okay, wait a minute. Okay, so this is the media book. Comes with your desk right there. Ah! It, the media book came with this book inside of it. So this looks like, yeah, it has contents. Cast and credits, vampires, ghosts and demons, vampire and the vampire. Some notes on the restoration and Dreyer's vampire. An interview with Baron Nicholas de Gunsberg and about the transfer. So this is all of the notes on the inner workings of this film, which is incredibly interesting. So that came inside the media book here. And this is a this is a book that came with it. Look at this. Writing Vampire, the screenplay by Carol Theodore Dreyer and Kristen Jewell. So it legit comes with the screenplay. Wow, this is fantastic. I had no idea that this release legit came with the screenplay. That's crazy. <laughs> I picked this up because the treatment was fantastic and it, you know, it's a horror, so I assumed that I would enjoy it, but I didn't realize that it came with all of these extra things. Okay, so the booklet contains feature essays by critics Mark Le Fanu and Kim Newman and a piece by Corbert on the restoration and a 1964 interview with producer and actor Nicholas Gunsberg, as well as a book featuring Dreyer and Christian Jewell's original screenplay. It also has Sheridan Leigh Fanu's 1872 story Carmilla, which was a source for the film. This film is from 1932. It's 73 minutes. It's in black and white. It's German with English subtitles. So if you are a fan of extras and special features and all of that stuff, I would highly recommend picking this up because this release comes with a lot of extra stuff for you guys to read and check out which I had no idea that this came with I thought that one was the movie <laughs> But anyway, that is what I picked up on my third Criterion haul. Obviously, Mulholland Drive was a second haul. I went into Barnes & Noble specifically just to pick this one up. But I just could not get my hands on that uncut gems. But there you go. That's what I got. What did you guys think? Hit me in the comments below and let me know if you guys own any of these and what you think about them. If not, maybe go pick them up and give them a go. I'm definitely going to check this one out because I am extremely interested. So was it a bad thing that they didn't have uncut gems? Maybe not. I got all of these awesome other movies and things. Thank you so much once again for hanging out with me today. If you would like to further help support my channel and moi, go ahead and hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, fill that bell for your girl and share me with your friends if they like Criterions. Maybe they want to check these out too. Maybe they want to see this unboxing of Vampire. I don't know. But if you would like to go one step further to help support me and my channel and to keep my dream alive and yourselves entertained, y'all on over to my Patreon and we can have some fun over there. Like I've said before, if I can get more than 10 subscribers, subscribers we can start having some live hangouts and doing some fun things like that which i truly look forward to but until the next time we gather have a killer day peace